Sports is A to Z with Mark Zinno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, where today I tell you money changes everything. Welcome in. We are live here on this Thursday. Appreciate you making A to Z part of your daily sports listen. Give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On ATL. Of course, I'm at Mark Zinno, M A R K Z I N N O. So much to do here on the show today. Jake Gordon from Sports Talk ATL going to join the show. This guy's a lot of fun. He's certainly interesting. Follow on Twitter. You'll If you don't know him, you will after the end of the show. we got some incredible fashion choices to talk about. And, hey, the Braves won a baseball game. Hallelujah. We'll do all that and more, plus shovels of wisdom right here on this Thursday edition of A to Z. Appreciate you starting your day with us right here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Okay. Um, it is Thursday, and SEC league meetings are continuing on. And there is a lot of consternation about something that seems so obvious, something that seems so easy to figure out. And yet, um, well, the smart people in the room can't do it because they're haggling over money. The scheduling issue for the SEC, whether they want to do eight conference games or nine conference games, is not going to be voted on. It doesn't look like at these meetings at all. They don't have to do it at this point in time. They don't have to have anything set until 2025 when Texas and Oklahoma get to the SEC. But boy, it would be nice to figure out all this stuff now. Nonetheless, we have a really bunch of really smart people in the room trying to decide whether the SEC, in short, should get rid of Georgia, Georgia Auburn, Alabama, Tennessee, Forget Texas and Texas A&M ever playing each other. You know, like these are obvious kind of football things that we all want to see as college football fans. And somehow there is some sort of discussion that the idea that, well, I guess maybe Georgia, Georgia Tech should take supreme over Georgia Auburn, which I don't really understand. That said, the nine game schedule for the conference is the easy, obvious choice. It makes it so much better for you to be able to have those three consistent opponents every year. That means Georgia gets Auburn, Georgia gets Florida, and Georgia gets one more opponent, whoever you want it to be, whether it's it's Tennessee or somebody else that they're going to see every single year. And then the other six conference games would be on a rotating schedule. The idea of doing the one and seven where you have one consistent opponent every year, in this case for Georgia, it would be Georgia-Florida, which means Georgia-Auburn wouldn't happen on a routine basis. It's just silly in favor of making sure that you schedule Georgia, Georgia Tech every year, which we don't really need to see in reality. In fact, Georgia Tech fans don't want to see it in reality. Georgia fans don't need to see it in reality, but yet it happens every single year. Now, I've only been in this state for eight years now, but I can tell you that Georgia, Georgia Tech seems to feel like a waste of my time. Even though Georgia Tech has won a couple of games in my tenure here, nonetheless, it just feels like a waste of my time. And I don't say that to slight Georgia Tech or their fans or their football program or whatever, but in reality, if you're asking me what game do I would I rather watch, Georgia-Auburn or Georgia-Georgia Tech, yeah, the answer is obvious. If you want me to watch Georgia-Tennessee over Georgia-Georgia Tech, yeah, the answer is obvious. Hell, I'd rather watch Georgia-South Carolina than Georgia-Georgia Tech. So this, this whole consternation about the conference schedule all boils down to one simple thing, money. And the commissioners... And the teams and the programs that are holding on to, to the eight-game conference schedule is simply because of the idea that they want to make sure they can be bowl eligible, right? Because one more SEC game for Vanderbilt, you know what that means? They don't have four cupcakes on their schedule. They only got three, right? They can't schedule Rice and go beat them. Like that, that's, that doesn't happen when you get rid of that game. Uh, if you got eight conference games, four non-conference, all you got to do is win two conference games and you can go to a bowl. Now, if you have to win three, it makes it a much tougher climb for the Vanderbilts for, at the, you know, at this point, uh, Mississippi State, uh, you know, the, the, the bottom dregs of the league, uh, Missouri, you know, those teams this, that, that are just in struggle bus mode right now. For them to, to 
to be prisoners of the moment and be stuck on something because your football program isn't where it needs to be now in favor of a big picture deal is just short-sighted and it's stupid. And, and in reality, the other argument of this should be is to change the bowl requirements to five wins. And there are some people, are you kidding me? Five of 500, you get to go to a bowl game. So what? There's six bowl games that matter. We all know that. The rest of them are for pure entertainment purposes and entertainment purposes only. I mean, at the end of the day, do I turn on the Belk Bowl because of who's in it? Or do I turn on the Belk Bowl because it's on TV and it's a standalone football game, you know, while I'm wrapping Christmas gifts on a Saturday before Christmas? Like, what, what are we doing here? And oh, by the way, yes, in the Belk Bowl, I'd much rather watch, you know, uh, Missouri versus Minnesota, Missouri versus Northwestern, then give me a dragon, the American, whoever it is, you know, versus somebody from conference USA, like I, I, two schools. I'm never going to watch period. Right. I, I'd rather watch two power five schools, even if they're five and seven power five schools go against each other than two non power five, six and six teams fight it out. I don't need to see San Jose. San Diego State. Like, it does nothing for me at all. Other than the gambler and me wanting to bet on the game, it, 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 I have absolutely no interest in it. And to be honest with you, you shouldn't either. Unless you go to one of those schools or have some affiliation to one of those schools, there's no reason for you to have an interest in it. But at least I, I can look and see possible NFL players uh, on Missouri's roster or, or or Vanderbilt's roster, right? Like, I, 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 can, I can watch those guys play. I, I can go watch you know, um, um, people from Rutgers going to the NFL. Like, th th that that happens. So I'd rather watch Rutgers, you know, play uh, whoever at the – Kansas in the bottom of the Big 12 than any of those other smaller schools. So lower the bowl standards. Who cares? There's like 50 bowls. Like, do you really care about who honestly makes one beyond the top six? Beyond the top six bowls, do you really care who gets what? Unless you have an affiliation to that school, what is the reason to care? This is such an easy decision for the SEC. Uh, and the schools that are holding on to that bowl game, which means extra money, extra revenue, extra everything, and even for the conference, the more teams that make bowl games in the conference, the more money the conference gets. They're letting that dictate the answer instead of better football, better product, better quality. And in reality, the more money comes from the better TV ratings, right? Because that's what this is all about. The SEC is moving to ESPN. They're going to have a huger contract. They have more TV ratings, all that stuff. That's where they need to be. And, and to me, the idea that you're thinking so short-term about a bowl game that in reality doesn't matter, uh, and I guess I shouldn't say because maybe it does matter to some of these smaller Power 5 schools, but for one that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of college football and especially the SEC, this is a really easy decision, and I'm not sure why they're struggling with it. But here we are. All right, coming up next, uh, if you have seen or looked at Sports Talk ATL on Twitter, Jake Gordon of Sports Talk ATL going to join us next right here on A to Z, on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast, you search Locked On Sports Atlanta. We'll be right back.